Draper Oakwood went public in September, a special purpose acquisition vehicle aimed at helping other tech companies go public. Why do startups need this kind of help? So we've been suffering a real liquidity uh, block for a long time. Ever since Sarbanes-Oxley came out in 2004, I guess that was, um, and all the regulations that followed that have made it more and more difficult for big companies uh, to go public and uh, growth companies to go public. Uh, very super large companies can still go public because they don't mind spending $10 million a year on just staying public. Well, now um, that has been a real, uh, it has been a real detriment to the startup community. And for years there, we had real liquidity problems. And people have filled in many different ways. And, and uh, there have been lots of different uh, creative solutions mm -hmm. to try to create more liquidity. But uh, this is definitely one of the m more innovative. My friend Amar Safraz uh, came to me with it, and, and, uh, and I, I went for it. It's a way for a, public, for a company to go public with all, without all the pain of having to go through all the road show and all the, the hassles. They can just take the money, be public, and uh, we think that this is a great solution for the, the, um, the group of companies that are in the half a billion to five billion dollar range. We think that there's a range of companies in market cap there's a range of companies that really need, uh, really want to go public. There's demand for this. Yeah, they want to go public, but they don't want to go through all the hassles and they don't want to spend all that money kind of um, going through just this big, long checklist of things they have to do before they go public. So have you targeted any particular companies yet? Yeah, we've, we, we haven't targeted, we're in a search. We have, uh, I think we've uh, had uh, 70 companies all that were of interest from our point, our standpoint or from theirs. And, uh, and we're going to see which one's the perfect fit. Um, and ideally, this first one is a real winner mm -hmm. uh, because we want to make sure that we, we come to market with a real winner because we've got, um, we've got hopes and ambitions for SPACs, venture SPACs, mm -hmm. To, uh, to, f to fill that market position between 500 million and $5 billion market cap. Company. So I want to talk a little bit about um, DFJ. You're obviously a founder uh, that there's been a little bit of upheaval as uh, Steve Jurbetson left. Now he sat on the boards of a number of companies, including uh, Tesla, SpaceX. Do you know yet who'll be replacing him on some of those company boards? Um, no, no, and Steve's been a fantastic investor and a great partner for 22 years. We, I'm sure everything will um, be worked out fine. It's just, uh, you know, there's a transition. Whenever anybody does anything differently, uh, there's a transition. And, uh, and I had a transition. I, I uh, manage back with DFJ, but I, um, my, the money I manage forward is Draper Associates now. And we all had to adjust to that, too. And it gave me an opportunity to be uh, free to go after things like Bitcoin and fintech and, uh, you know, eventually against it, after GovTech, where a large institutional venture capital fund like DFJ would, um, would have trouble because they, they think, oh, you know, he's doing this. Now we've all got to go in that direction. So I've, I've freed them of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, you're, you're still obviously an investor in DFJ, and what are investors being told since since he left? Are you is there getting a lot of information about how the transition, as you put it, will take place? Well, it, it, DFJ is a great uh, great entity. It's a big institution. It's going to live on and on and on, and there will be changes, and partners will move and come back and move in, um, and it's going to be a great success for years to come. I I feel like all the investors pretty much feel that. And then that's the feedback that you're getting from them too. Oh yeah.